Hello, Fearless Gamers, and welcome to another episode of Touching Base here on Fearless Games. Welcome back. How's it going? Oh, not bad, not bad. I, uh... We're missing someone, aren't we? We are, we are missing someone. Someone important? That is debatable. Hmm. Okay, okay. So, um, yes, just us two this time yeah. around. Yeah, uh, Stark Lord has become very super busy in his life lately, and as a result, will not be able to join us this month. Yes, yes. Uh, might not be able to join us next month either. We'll have to see what goes. Yeah, he's, he's busy. May his organs boil. Probably smell bad. May his organs boil when we're not around. Okay. It's better. Yes. Yeah. You gotta time it right. Yeah. You don't want to be in the room when all of a sudden he's just like, oh, no, and then, yep. and then might, we might have to clean it up. Mm. And then we're on camera saying this, or well, you're on camera saying this. Yeah. He said it. Uh, so like the police will be like, you know, how'd you do it? And then I, I'd probably leave you to hang. I don't know. I mean, I've seen that movie Thinner. That dude got away with it. That dude didn't do it on video. <laughs> well, technically he did. No, uh, it wasn't a documentary. <laughs> it wasn't? No. So Stephen King doesn't write Truth Life? Um, sometimes. Not that time, though. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Was The Shining? Uh, no, the clown thing was, though. Okay. Did I tell you about that? No. Okay, sorry, Fearless Gamers. Tangent is about to happen. There is a town in uh, the UK. Okay. In which... Some guy, nobody knows who, has started just standing around dressed like Pennywise the Dancing Clown from Stephen King's It, <laughs> holding balloons, just staring at people. Occasionally he'll wave. And he's been doing it for weeks. And no, nobody knows who he is. Nobody knows, knows if he even lives in the town. He just, he showed up one day, and then sometimes you'll look and he'll be there, and then he'll be gone. Like, he's, he's, it's terrifying. This is kind of creepy. Yeah, something. yeah, this is an actual person doing this, and there are photos, I'll show them to you at some point. They're, it, it's, it's mortifying. That's, that's weird. Yeah. Um, I read about that and I was like, done. <laughs> As never long as he said, doesn't keep going, they fall out. Never. I, I don't know. He might. He might. <laughs> nobody knows. Like nobody knows who he is. <laughs> That's kind of scary. Yeah. Um. So speaking of scary things, I don't know. Um, I was going off of that. Kind of a poor tangent, I think. Yeah. <laughs> but um, some news has come out. We never realized this, but Dystopian Legions. Came out. Oh yeah, that got released. Yeah, apparently it got released a year ago. What? And yeah, really? According to I the Stark announced a year ago. A year ago. <laughs> well, yeah, according to the Stark Lord, it's been out for quite a bit. We kind of dropped the ball on that. Well, he dropped the ball because he didn't tell us. He knew, didn't say anything. Yep. But it's basically for anyone his who's played this in his eyes. Yes. Basically, for anyone who hasn't seen it, it's like dystopian. It's the same theme as Dystopian Wars. It's just on land. Yeah, it's the same setting, but it's a cavalry game. Well, not cavalry, but a military an infantry, ground force. Infantry would be the word. There we go. An infantry game. So and you have like dudes, like yep. in like in 40k. They've got the Empire of the Burning Sun, which is Japan. The um, Federated States of America, which is basically America. That's yeah, exactly. Um, the Persian Empire. Uh, no, the Prussian Empire. Prussian, sorry. Which is the Prussians. Yep, and then Looking I think they have Britannia as well. Yeah, which is right now, England. Which is England. Um, looking pretty snazzy. It's I'm, cool. I'm tempted to just buy that one model just to see what the crocodile looks like. Well, you can you can Google it. Oh, really? Yeah, you Google image search it. It looks decent. Yeah? Yeah, that's, that's um, that's how I found out, uh, because I was talking to the Stark Lord about the, uh, the one... Uh, Empire of the Blazing Sun model that's like a, a samurai, a dude on like a steam bike. Yes. And uh, he was wondering whether or not it came with a sword, and you really have no way of telling by the website. I googled the model, the model itself, mm. and went to image search and found like a photo of the sprue. Mm -hmm. Found myself on a blog that's been reviewing the individual models. 
and like gave you a breakdown of what it comes with, and it does come with a sword. Mm. So you can like Google the the, the model okay. names, and you'll be able to get better. Fair pictures. enough. Fair yeah. enough on that. And I, would, I probably won't be long before they're up on sites like Cool Mini or not. Yeah. Um, some other news, um, in the 40k realm, Ferris Manus is coming out. They've got the new Noise Marines and a couple of chapter stuff going on. Um, there is rumor that GW is going to be trying to get Forge World into Battle Bunkers, which would be nice. Don't have to go all the way to London mm -hmm. to get them, which is pretty cool. And Pokemon comes out soon. Pokemon comes out in two, well... Two weeks. Yeah, roughly two weeks. It's uh, it's actually 13 days. Yes. But it's... It's it, gonna be hype. It, it's gonna be pretty It's gonna be pretty hype. Um, everyone's getting built up on that already. You can now get the Pokemon um, 3DS as well. We mm -hmm. got the new TV show, Pokemon Origins. Uh, it's actually not a TV show. It's a movie. Oh, that yeah, I that Yeah, that's the... It's not gonna be episodes. It's just gonna be a two... It's a two-hour movie. Interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. And, um, is there anything else going on? Um... As far as news goes... Well, there's, um... I don't know how familiar the Fearless Gamers are with the history of Dungeons & Dragons. Mm -hmm. But, um... D&D came out in, what, the 70s? Something like Something that. Something like A long time ago. Uh, Before us. And the original release was done in this thing called the White Box. And the White Box had basically everything you needed to play the game. Rule books. I think came with dice. Mm. Probably character sheets. I never owned the White Box. My parents weren't really into gaming and I was not alive at the time. Uh, but uh, Wizards of the Coast recently announced that they're going to be re-releasing the White Box with the original Dungeons and Dragons rules uh, in a deluxe set. Uh, which... I mean, I haven't read any reactions to the announcement. Mm. I think it's kind of cool. Yeah. Just as like a piece of living gaming history. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, I, 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 I think I've made it clear on the show before that I'm a big fan of the preservation of gaming history. Mm. Uh, so this is something that I think, uh, while it does stink a little bit of Wizards of the Coast trying to make money on something they don't actually have to put any work into, mm because they're charging like 150 bucks for it. That is a little. Uh, it stinks a little bit of capitalism, but at the same time, it's like, you know, that's cool. Like That is a pretty nice you know, thing to do. Like a nice little gesture to bring, yeah. bring, to show everyone where the whole thing started. Exactly. The, the, only, the only problem is, are they profiting on people's nostalgia? Mm, that can be an issue at, the, at times uh, with that. Which is, I sometimes feel hypocritical saying that kind of thing, being that I am such a big Pokemon fan, mm. and it's almost, it, it is almost like every game is profiting on my, <laughs> on my nostalgia. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but I think that is kind of sort of a fine line mm. in regards to uh, you know preservation and promotion of you know, gaming history versus we can charge people for this again. Yeah. <laughs> I think one part of it may be also at one, in one ways a look at the, how the company is doing. Mm. In a sense, like I feel like 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 if it's char like banking off of our nostalgia seems more like a tactic when a company is starting to not do so well or they're trying to drive their profit lines. Uh, so they're going, right. hey... How can we do this? Oh, let's put up this old box. People will buy it. It either it either reflects on whether or not on the company doing poorly, or it just reflects on the attitude of the company. Hmm. Uh, Wizards of the Coast, I doubt they're doing poorly, because Wizards of the Coast doesn't just do Dungeons and Dragons. That they is do Dungeons true. and the Dragons, which is pretty much the, the the most popular role playing game out there. Which you know is kind of a shame, but whatever. Hmm. And they also do Magic the Gathering. Yeah. Amongst a couple other things. But Magic Wizards. Kids. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, WizKids is a subsidiary. Uh, but, like, Magic the Gathering alone brings in enough money. Yeah! <laughs> like, yeah, that's... Magic the Gathering is, is their license to print money. So I don't necessarily <laughs> think they're doing it because they need to, to, they need to find a way to drive their profit margins up. Mm. I think they're doing it 
because they want to find a way to drive their profit <laughs> margins up. Uh, they may also be releasing it due to concerns of losing old customers. Mm. Because as these new additions keep coming out, th- you know, people will leave the game. I, you know, I was really hyped for fourth edition Dungeons and Dragons. Mm. I was really excited when it was announced and like I did a play test at Comic Con that at the, at the time and I thought it was really good and then it came out and I was really underwhelmed with the product. Which is interesting because like for me, I really liked 4.0, but that's probably because there was less math involved. Yeah, I, I, I liked that part of it. I liked certain aspects of it. Mm. You know, the core rules were were solid regardless. That's not what I was underwhelmed with. I was underwhelmed by the fact that all the classes, as you're playing the game, feel the, start to feel the same. Mm. Like the experience starts to feel really homogenous. Mm. And... Uh, that was, I mean, the whole point of uh, having a class system is to provide different, exactly, different gameplay experiences. You know, you play D&D 3.5 and it's like, I'm a barbarian, I'm a wizard, nothing is the same. Yeah. You know, whereas now it's like, I'm a barbarian, I'm a wizard. Well, how do you function? I have at wills, I have, you know, uh, encounter this... and dailies. How do you function? I have at wills, I have encounter. You know, their, their powers all work the same. same the only way. real differences are the HP mounts. Yeah, and their and the gear that they right. have. That's that's really that's really it. And that started to it just starts to it, feel like that seems to be like or, a victim of streamlining. Um, in well, a that's sense. that's that's definitely due to the streamlining of the system. I don't think streamlining, uh, I, I don't think it's a, nece- a, a necessary mm. uh, thing that happens with streamlining. I think it's just streamlining's the culprit in this case. Yeah. Uh, and it's very easy to forget about the idea of having a dynamic gameplay experience mm. in attempting to make a game more streamlined and more. Uh, Everybody simplistic tundra. Exactly. Maybe the the more pick up and play a game becomes, the easier it becomes to make it less dynamic. Yeah. That's actually. I don't know if I've announced this on the channel. Uh, I've been working on a card game for Fearless Games. Like I've I've been mm. working on. Uh, you know about it. Yep. I yeah. just don't know if I've said anything on no, camera about it. That but I think is the first time we've heard about it. Yeah. That for on the about. Channel. I think nine months now? Sounds about right, roughly. Uh, maybe, maybe a little, a little less. Long. Maybe like seven or eight months. Okay. Because it was it was when I was on unemployment. And okay. I've only been I've only been off unemployment for six months. Okay. So it, it's got to be probably around, I'd, I'd say eight, nine months. Sure. Baby. Yeah. Um, I decided to start working on a card game because you know how we announced uh, working on Street Fight. Street Fight's. Yeah. Uh, development process has just become so protracted mm. because you know frankly let's let's be honest we're just a few guys who are doing this on the side as this much as in our daily as job. much as we would love to be doing this professionally we're not at that place in our lives yet yep uh yet is the keyword there and i actually took a step back from the development of street fight because mm-hmm. i was being too overbearing on changes Mm. So I volunteered to just take a more editorial standpoint and just at each stage in the game I'll look at the current set of rules and if I have any major issues, whatever. Yeah. Uh, but nothing was going to get done with me with me being that as closely involved as I was before. Okay. So now that's Phil's project primarily, mm-hmm. which means it's going to start taking a lot longer because he's so busy. Yeah. Which is a shame, but it is what it is. He managed to get a decent amount of work in for it before he became busy. Uh, but. The reason I brought up the card game is because my primary goal for it is to make it as pick up and play as possible. Mm-hmm. But I'm doing my best to also make it dynamic. Mm. Make your card choices count. Make your deck, two decks feel completely different. Yeah. And uh, from the couple of play tests I've had, that's happening. Mm. Yeah, I've managed to keep it dynamic and at the same time be fairly simplistic to play. Yeah. Uh, it hasn't been easy. Mm. You know, certain things in my first build of, of, of the game were broken. <laughs> just shattered broken. And other things just like, why aren't you doing anything? <laughs> you should be doing something. It's like, you didn't give me the power. Um, 
So I get it. You know, I get that when they made fourth edition streamlined, mm -hmm. it made it more difficult to make the classes feel yeah. different. But they 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 had ways of doing it. Yeah, that, it's, sure. it's a fine line. That's yeah. like like for example, like you can say like just in general with magic, you know, there's there's the streamlining the basic rules. Mm -hmm. Every deck has to follow this procedure. Right. The dynamic comes in the different abilities and the different right. things that right. you have. So Based you know, on the colors. You, you know, yeah. You, so that's probably something they went a little too far with. They went too far with making it streamlining and forgetting where exactly. the line should exactly. be drawn. Um, the, 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 anyway, the reason I got into f the fourth edition uh, discussion for this, uh, I was mentioning that, you know, when, when I was really underwhelmed with fourth edition, I officially made the switch to Pathfinder. Mm. Like, as a consumer, Pathfinder is my role-playing game of choice for fantasy games. Okay. Uh, so, Wizards of the Coast essentially lost my business. Mm. If Wizards of the Coast re-released like D&D &D 3.5 in the same way that they're re-releasing the white box I'd actually be tempted to take a look especially mm. if they were like hey we kind of retooled it which they didn't say anything with this yeah but, you they know, probably wouldn't no but I'd be tempted yeah because 3.5 and Pathfinder are very similar similar in fact Pathfinder is just a modified version of D&D &D 3.5 if you weren't aware okay yeah, yeah. it's uh Aren't we planning on doing something like that later? Uh, we're working on it, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we're working we're on that. A couple of friends on Facebook. Yes. Um, but yeah, so I think that's part of another reason why they are re-releasing the white box. They want the, that that group money from that group that, that they're not getting anymore. Yeah. And that's probably a part of why it's as expensive as it is. Probably. Because they're, they know they're not going to get a lot of their money over time. Yeah. So they're trying to get as much of it as they can. Uh, which you can't blame them. They're a company. Yeah, they, you know they're, they are a business. They're trying to make money, but it does feel a little shifty. It does, but at least it's not as bad as some model gaming companies where yeah, it's like yeah, Games it, Workshops price hikes. Like um, a video that I watched recently as a joke on gaming companies. Yeah, you sent was, me a link to that. I didn't get a chance it, to watch it yet. One of the things was is like I've got a great idea. We double the price of the models and cut them in half. That way, the models have double the value to the player. Everybody's happy. <laughs> and so, it's, excuse me. <laughs> well, that that was a great little video. Like, uh, I'll probably put a link in the description yeah, for I'll that. Yeah, take a look at it sooner. It's later. hilarious, but it's like that saying. You know, how much of it is the company trying to just make money? Right. Just for the sake of it, and how much of it is it a hey, for all of those who wish it was back here, you right. can have it right. back. You know, like because I'm sure a lot of people who owned the white box, that I'm sure that it has fallen apart on them. Yeah, and they just don't have it anymore, and they might want another one. So yeah, it's it's cool that they're doing it. I yeah. I support that they're doing it. I don't think they shouldn't be doing it. But, but at you the have to time, think about it a little. The bit. price point it's at makes me go yeah. Hmm. Um, I find that this sort of thing uh, is becoming more and more prevalent in that I find nostalgia is becoming a bigger market. Yes. Uh, Nintendo's kind of been doing it for years when they re-release old editions of the po like like Fire Red and Leaf Green. Yep. Uh, and like Heart Gold and Soul Silver, they've been doing that. Or the HD collections that we've been getting. Right, the some HD games. collections as well, which I support the heck out of the HD collections. Oh yeah, because that's again upgrading the old games to be able to be played on like the, the newer three. systems. In you case know? hey, you know your PS One broke, well here's an HD which version that works. To do. You know that's that's uh, you know that's that's really cool. I yeah. support that. I met a guy, this is super tangential, but not entirely. Okay. Uh, when uh, when we camped up for the Stanley tattoo, mm -hmm. well, for Stanley's autograph, and I got it tattooed. Uh, <laughs> when we camped out, uh, we ended up next to, next to a guy on the line at one point, the line got jumbled, mm. uh, who was talking to me about his video game collection, mm -hmm. his video game console collection, that he's been building since video games became a thing. Mm. And apparently it takes up like the entire attic of his home that he has literally built to be climate controlled. 
like he built it to stay at a certain temperature, a certain a certain humidity, like the ideal place to store Dumber. these kinds of electronics. And he's telling me about it. And I'm like, you're really cool. <laughs> like, <laughs> like just the, the the fact that he can go up and do his attic mm. and just grab an old Atari game and actually play it mm. without having to worry about like, oh. Oh god, I have to blow in it. I have yeah. to blow in the cartridge. <laughs> like, oh, does my TV work? Like it all just still works. Like yeah. like like new. And I'm I'm super down for that kind of thing. Mm. Unfortunately, not all of us will store our possessions like that. Yeah. So providing new versions of it is the closest is the next best thing. Yeah. Um But like I said, there's a fine line between just giving us what we want yeah. and yeah. banking on it. Yeah, exactly. Um like, I still don't understand why Devil May Cry 2 was part of the Devil May Cry HD collection. <laughs> we can, that's, that's a piece of gaming history we can forget. <laughs> uh, but you know, a lot of things, a lot of things have been going a bit more nostalgic. Yeah. Um, it's been, it, it's been happening a lot in Japan, but it's been more, more, uh, mm. it's been starting to happen on, in the States as well. Yeah. Uh, I find a lot of it sometimes revolves around banking on just the title getting you a lot uh, of times. That's one of the things, but like, another, like one thing that they've been doing with uh, like the Sentai shows, for example, mm. is there's been a lot more crossovers with old shows, and a couple of years back there was a show that was based entirely around turning into the old heroes. Mm. That's really cool, because it got, you know, they would allow them to bring out the old suits and, you know, get the old viewers back and also teach the new viewers about, you know, the where show. they came from. And that has actually caused Saban, who makes Power Rangers, to uh, do this whole Power Rangers Super Mega Force thing that they're doing. Okay. Which is uh, basically the same concept where now the, the Power Rangers are turning into old versions of the Power Rangers or like meeting up with old versions. Like that's that's why Jason David Frank's on the show again as the Green Ranger. I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, which. That poor man's whole career is based on being the Green Ranger. Johnny Young Bosch got out of that when he could. <laughs> yeah. Now um, he's known just as Vash. <laughs> the uh, the funny thing about it, though, with, with the Power Rangers one, is they were only able to get a f small handful of the old actors. Mm. Most people were turning them down, and I was like... Yeah. Yeah. But, um... I forget where I was going with that. <laughs> <laughs> We do this sometimes. <laughs> we will continue to do this. Yes. Uh, but yeah, no, that's really cool. If you go to the Wizards of the Coast website, you can see like pictures of the new, uh, the new white box. Um, no, speaking of that, just going off in in with that gold nostalgia thing. What would you say is probably your most um, memorable? RPG D and D memory that like you're most like when you look back on those were the days. Ah, oh, that's that's like the hardest question. <laughs> oh god, it doesn't have to be a moment. It could be like a game session type of thing. That's still that's still hard. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I that's a really difficult <laughs> question because. Because I mean, there's there, that's one of the things about role playing is that it builds mm. all these incredible memories. Uh, I think I'd have to say the one that sticks out in my mind right now is uh, Stan ran a game a few, couple years back, well, yeah, like two years ago, uh, right before he uh, left. And um, in that game, I was playing a halfling bard. Okay. And. That halfling bard had it in his head that he was the son of the god of adventure. Okay. I had no evidence to just, prove this. But he just genuinely believed it. Uh, and his name was Archibald Shroudfoot. Okay. Great, great, greatest character I've ever played. Mm. Because this character had no combat capabilities, <laughs> zero combat ability, but charisma through the roof, and just did not believe he could die. Mm. So he would just take these stupid risks. So. There were a couple times in that game when I would somehow talk my way through these impossible odds, uh, such as t uh, talking a, a, a zombie, an army of, of flaming skeletons into just turning around and walking away. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that was a good one. But the one that really got me was we were going through this ancient, like, ruined city, mm. and we were suddenly attacked by gargoyles. And 
we're not doing so hot, but we managed to kill like the head gargoyle okay. or whatever. Because uh, I, I called him out. I was like, who's, who's your leader? And he comes out and I'm pretty sure our, our ranger just shot him in the face and he died. <laughs> and and so, so I don't remember who said it. I think the ranger who shot him might have been like, now who's your leader? And they were like, they didn't immediately answer. <laughs> so I just went, I am. <laughs> And everyone at the table looks at me like, are you serious? <laughs> and Stan looks at me and says, are you serious? Like, yeah. He's like, roll a die. So, so I, I take my, my D's and I just kind of throw it because I don't expect it. It lands, it doesn't doesn't bounce, doesn't roll, it just lands. Natural 20. <laughs> and he looks at it and he goes, let me see your character sheet real quick. <laughs> Hands it back to me. And... After like a moment of, of awkward silence of the game, all the gargoyles pointed at me. <laughs> and that was how Archibald Shroudfoot uh, became the king of the gargoyles. That's amazing. And actually had like an army of gargoyles at his command. That's awesome. Yeah. So that would probably be one of the most memorable gaming moments in my life. Um, for me, I'd have to say is is two moments. One moment that really got me to to appreciate gaming nostalgia to as much as I do. And one that was probably just a great character moment where we broke the GM for a slight moment. Uh -oh. And it was Frank of uh -oh. all people. Uh -huh. um, it was, we were trapped. We were setting up these magic ruins to explode. Mm -hmm. And we left, we had to leave two guys down in the, in the, um, Two guys got left in the hole itself. And we were sitting there and they're like, crap, these gar these, I think it was ogres or something was going to kill them. And so I went, oh, there's rope down there, right? It's like, well, I animate the rope and pull them back up. And he goes, I don't think you can actually do that. I have to read that. I was like, but you let me do it once before when two characters were falling off a cliff. And he went, what's wrong with you people? Seriously, not five minutes ago, you guys could put a, two words together to make a sense. Was it was it the freaking sun? Did you need the sun to go down before you people would start gaming in this game? Seriously. It's true. It's true. The sun hinders it. Yes. We're used to a basement environment. Yes, because we usually role played with. We had these big giant windows in the cafeteria, yeah, but it was always dark that. out. Yeah, we usually. So we never night. had sunlight shining on us uh, to see our character sheets. Until it was. And sometimes we'd get sunlight shining on us towards the end of the game. Because the sun we was just, rising. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Those were fun nights. Those are fun times. And when did you break the GM? Was that the one? You that was it. Oh, right. I was just like, how? Okay. Yeah. I don't understand it. He just couldn't fathom how we just 180 because the whole night we were just like, um, I draw an arrow and fire. What are you shooting at? How does that solve the problem that you're yeah. fixing? And he just went. I think every group has a session like that where they're just like, I can't, like, because I feel like every group develops a dynamic in which one or two people tend to be the problem solvers. Mm. So not everybody goes with their problem solving hat on. Yes. So those people who are the designated problem solvers for that particular game, if they come in on an off day, everything gets screwed. Yeah. Just like, like management falls apart. So I feel like every game group has at least one session like that. Oh yeah. Um, and uh, where, you know, you just, nobody gets anything done, done. and then you flood lower Manhattan with coconut milk. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, which is a story for another no, day. Right. Um, but another one that got me to appreciate gaming nostalgia for a big chunk was the one Changeling game that we did. Which one? That we only did one. Oh, where, the one session thing yep. yeah, where I was the satyr? Yep. Where we did this one Changeling game and I got so super into it. Mm -hmm. The characters were great. The game just yeah. flowed and it was this really awesome Debbie thing. Dietlmeier. And then, I, yeah, that's where Debbie yeah. Dietlmeier came from. I remember that now. And it got me to the point where it was that game that I was like, changeling, you know, that's gotta happen. And then I discovered that the game doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. And it made me appreciate when I went into a gaming store like two years later and I just found yeah. the game book What's for this? that. It was, thing, it was sections like that that I think have caused me to also 
try and seek out more independent, more fringe games. Mm. Like Deadlands, like uh, Unknown Armies, like Don't Rest Your Head. Because I, I'm looking for that new experience. Yeah. Because you know what? Pathfinder D&D, fun. Mm. Great games. But sometimes you just want something different. Yep. And, uh, you know, that, that something different when you do it can build a lot of cool memories. Oh, yeah. But uh, you know what I would like to know? Mm. I would like to know if the Fearless Gamers out there have any uh, really cool gaming-related memories. Either yeah. either with, you know, a war game. Did you pull some really cool gambit that, uh, you know, won you a tournament or just a casual game? Or in role-playing, did you ever talk an army of burning skeletons into walking away? <laughs> Or become the king of the gargoyles, or uh, make your GM wonder if you're even human. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, let us know, or let us know if you have any questions and you want yep. us to discuss in the future. Yeah, because uh, I want to know. Yes, I'm more curious. I'd like to see a lot more. I'd like to see us do more videos involving you guys' participation. Yeah. You know, que you know, questions like if you have like general questions about us and the channel itself. Yeah. At some point, we should probably do like a like a Q and A episode yeah. of Touching Base. Like, in fact, I'm going to encourage that yeah. right now. You know, if questions, comments, leave them, when and we will uh, dedicate. Our, what month is our two year anniversary in? It's coming up soon. Is it next month? Or the I month think it's after? next month. I don't it's know. Either, it's October it's or November. I think it's October. Either for October or November, we should do a Q and A episode. Then. Yes. Yes, we definitely. Yeah. Um, so check out the Facebook because we'll post a pin yeah, we'll, to we'll, do that. Yeah, we'll work it out. And we're also with that. We do have a new account going up. We oh yeah, we're we're actually gonna start using our Twitter. Here. Yes, we're rebooting the Twitter. We'll actually be doing a um, contest. <laughs> we've, we've given control to the Twitter of the to Twitter to somebody who will actually use it. To someone who actually knows how to tweet. Yes, exactly. Yes. So uh, that should be. Something to keep an eye out for as well, because we yep. will have some kind of promotional giveaway. Yep. I think, correct? we have one right now working up. It'll yeah. probably come out around the same time as this video. Yeah, so we'll we'll make that announcement uh, when the time comes as well. Yes, and I think that's, that's uh, I think that's a good, good place for right now. For yes, for this month. Yes. So again, let us know about your most yeah. nostalgic moments in gaming. Let us know any questions that you might have yeah, for please. us, and or if there's if there's been like something we haven't discussed and you've been sitting here. Waiting, waiting for us to discuss it? it. Yeah. Let us know, and yeah. we'll discuss. We, yeah, exactly. You know, we are very big on feedback and using what you guys give us to make new shows. There are also some months where we'll sit here and be like, what are we going to talk about? Yeah. So you're actually doing us a big favor. <laughs> <laughs> and so, with that all, until next time, Fearless Game... Oh, before we go off, happy birthday to our camera girl. Because ah. it was her birthday this week. Oh, yeah, it was. And we got your birthday coming up, too. Yes. Uh, next... next uh, Saturday. It's actually a week from today. Yeah. Next uh, Sunday. The Stark Lord the is Stark Lord Saturday. Saturday, yes. Yeah. We, weird birthday time frame, actually. Yeah. It's not as bad. It's not the worst that, I, that I've experienced. I have one where it's there's seven people, literally, like, two days apart from each other Yikes. in one month. It's crazy. Yikes. So, until next time, Fearless Gamers, take care. Have a good one.